Normally, I'm your MC at MTD, but today we're talking about a 1650 MC from Watchon. It is a huge machine, but what industries is it really good in? Well, I'll tell you to take a closer look for oil and gas, new energy, shipbuilding, mining, gear manufacturing, and aerospace with jet engines, and possibly even more. Being from America, they say that some things are better when they're bigger. Well, we're in Korea today, and we're looking at the 1650 MC. And I got to say, Texas isn't wrong. And in Korea, in this case, bigger is better, Klaus. Now, when I look at machines like this, I instantly know why well, I can get a lot of things done. But most importantly, I can put a big part in there to get a lot of things done. But we always want to know what the differences are yeah. when we look at big machine, big machine, big machine. What are the differences on this machine? Now, okay, first of all, it's not really a big machine. We call it a medium-sized machine. Oh, you call it medium. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. The all part's right. bigger than me, but this is a medium-sized machine. A vertical turning is always used to, to machine heavy parts. This machine can go, or is designed to go up to 10 tons on the table. All right? So to cater this kind of weight and then machine on it, especially if it is tough material like stainless steel, forged materials, etc., etc. There you need a very strong structure. So we have designed this machine in a double column design. Now, of course, many people can say, well, everybody else has one. I've heard that buzzword before, the double column. Go. But we refined this in a way that we designed the crossway to a real axis. And this makes this machine in the market outstanding because most other suppliers are using the W axis only for positioning. It may be three, maximum four position, depending on the size of the machine. Here on this machine and on our bigger VD2000. The real big machines. <laughs> this is a little bit bigger than medium. The biggest machine is then the 4500, really a monster. <laughs> but coming back, so this one, can use the W axis as a real machining axis. That means it's a controlled axis where I can move the RAM like the machine does now, completely in, and now I would use the RAM, uh, the, the W axis only for machining. So this gives extra stability if I need it. If not, I position it and the RAM comes out and you can use the RAM for ID or OD turning. So let me ask a real basic question for an audience member out there who's learning as well. If I don't have this option that you've just described, yeah. what are my limitations? And what now are those limitations that you've removed because of the yeah. way you've set this up? Well, first of all, you lose on, on total height. Your workpiece cannot be that high. You cannot go, let's say, on the outside all the way down. So this gives a lot of advantage. This machine has now a complete combined axis travel of 1.9 meter, Ooh. okay? Despite is a called medium-sized machine. <laughs> medium-sized, you're still getting me with that medium-sized class. Okay. But I wanna ask you, as we're talking about this as well, that lack of overall movement on the other style, that would lead to a secondary or third operation in some cases, right? Because you, you'd have to switch machines. That sounds like a real pain as well. Either this, or you have to utilize practically a ram which goes all the way out, which is then like a two-speak being And now we're losing rigidity. Exactly. Ah, and those exactly. harder materials you brought up, Here that's making sense. Here we go, okay? So it's then either on the ID or on the OD side, it's the same problem. Doesn't matter whether I machine inside, inside even worse, if I want to go now in a groove, I want to do an undercut, etc. There's not much stability anymore. Right. This one here, we use a RAM, which has a, a 250 by 250 square diameter. So it's pretty st stable. And we can guarantee that from the top to the bottom, moving this quilt by one meter out, the stability is there, 100%. Well, you mentioned a meter, so I have to ask this question as well, because you talked about stability. What's the precision like within that meter as well? Are we still pretty tight tolerance? It's a, it's a good question, but we guarantee, because we are using linear glass scales in all axes, and because of the mechanical rigidity, 
we are within definitely 15 micron in this range. This is the really depending on the application. That's really good. So it's pretty accurate. Yeah, it is for that size, it's very accurate. I'd like to step into the world of just understanding mm -hmm. the fact that you guys do everything in-house. You yeah. have a bunch of locations across Korea yeah. making sure that these things are produced. To my understanding, this one is done at a different facility from some of the other machines that you and I have already talked about. Correct. How do you keep making such high quality machines over and over and over again in different parts of manufacturing? Yeah. No, look, I mean, in total, our company has in Korea eight facilities to manufacture. Wow. They are not all making machines. We make other parts as well as OEM manufacturer for other companies. Uh, we have our own businesses, for example, specialized gears. Everything for 50 millimeter diameter up to 2.8 meter, we have the grinding machines for it. And in a, honestly speaking, in the Northern Hemisphere, there are not many companies which can do this. So it's a very expensive investment first required to make this kind of precision gears mm -hmm. for windmills, for power stations, for trains. They are going to the Panama Canal where they pull the ships through, etc., etc. It is a wide field. Then we make hydraulic cylinders and chucks for turning machines. In-house, we also sell them to Japan, to Europe, to local Korea, to manufacturers. They use it in their machines. Then where this machine comes from, from Changwon, we have a very huge facility. It's called Watcher Machinery Company. So they have also machine tool manufacturing and automobile parts manufacturing. For example, cylinder block, cylinder head and crankshaft. And lately also very big cylinders, 12 cylinders for construction machines and power stations. So it's, as you see, we are diversified, but everything turns around engineering, manufacturing. How do I do this part effectively? And I think our customers they feel when we talk to them that, they, that we know what we are talking. I think it would almost be impossible not to. In fact, well, have, Klaus, have you heard that statement, please sit down, I have something important to tell to you? Yeah. You should have asked me to <laughs> sit down before that whole, that was so much powerful yeah. information. Yeah. Even just the gears themselves that yeah. you described, that world in itself is art. It's the people, art, yeah. th those of you out there who are making gears right now, thank you for doing it. We appreciate the type of artwork that you guys have to do, the precision that goes into it, the fact that you guys yeah. are part of that world and this world and this and so on and so forth. And then you bring it all together Correct. to make sure not only are your machines good, but those machines last for everyone you work with. Correct. This is outstanding, Klaus. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, look, in particular since we went those in certain type of industries, our machines had to be confirmed, or revised, refought, rebuilt, modified to cater for this kind of application. And there again we are learning and this goes in the whole group. Don't forget now with a history of over 78 years and now just recently we handed over to the third generation. There's a lot of tradition, a lot of experience, and craftsmanship's in it. Well guys, there you have it. I thought it was a big machine. Klaus says it's a medium machine, so we're gonna have to go see the big ones at the factory as well. On top of that, when you're vertically integrated over and over again, we're stamping this point in because so many people are just bringing parts from around the world, assembling them and telling you the machines are incredible. Vertically integration means everything. The rigidity that's on this machine, I hadn't even seen before. So Klaus, thank you so much for showcasing this to me. I don't wanna be like a toothpick like some of the other <laughs> machines. When I go down a meter, I know Here the people go. machining things don't want that either. So Klaus, again, thank you so much for your time. I do pleasure. appreciate it.